Hello, uh, this video is going to be addressing the sexual predator online. Now they may or may not be narcissistic and what does it matter? They're online and what you look out for are a few things. Number one is going to be the over friendly nature a male may make. That's, that's what my experience is being a female. In complimenting you and wanting to get to know you and wanting to exchange information and asking you personal questions about yourself and telling you that they're ready for a romance. When they come on strong like that, red flags. Now, I'm gonna tell you a personal story that I have and I'm doing it makeup free, but I have really good lighting. This is a nice lighting, it flattens out lines. I have plenty of videos that have harsh lighting, okay? This is also makeup free. And the reason being is because I'm giving my face a rest and I don't wear eye makeup every day. And I very, very rarely wear all over makeup, but I will only do that when I am at an event in which other women who are judging me more harshly than men are, except for the ones on the online dating app I'm on. <laughs> And I want to let people know, this is what a woman looks like when she can blush at her own jokes and she is natural and not wearing any makeup. So I recently went to an event. It was a fundraiser. I paid some money. Some of that money went to a charity. The other part of that money went towards my ability to eat and drink and be merry. So I meet this man there and we're, we're both single. And I was like, hey, I'll, you know, chat up a little bit, found out about him. Um, and I, I, he's like, ask me how old I am. And he, he offers, he was born in 1955. And he goes, I'd guess you were right about my age. Wrong. Did I tell him? No. Because he was complaining about his two ex-wives. And I had a feeling they either did plastic surgery, Botox injections, fillers, and the whatnot by the way he was talking about them. And I wanted to say, this is what a natural woman looks like, but you don't have to explain yourselves to these guys online or not. Now, number one, he was very rude and he asked me my age. And number two, he was old, old, old. He was uh, having to rely on a cane to walk and I'm like prancing around. And I think to myself, he's, he's 55. He assumes I was born in 1958. Oh, it was born in 1963. So the guy's insulting like crazy. And he just had these attitudes. So men who are single, do not seem to have the ones that have attitudes about women any idea of what we are we're nurturing uh, creatures that don't to take offense i don't take offense to the insult it gave me great insight into his character which was he was projecting on to me he was projecting his age and his decrepit state of not being able to get around and his fingers had the worst nail uh, fungus and they were yellow and lifted up with that goop on the inside. And I was shuddering, imagining being touched by him. Blah. Okay, my next start part of my story. You've heard about, yeah, there were online predators. There was this man who found me and it was on LinkedIn, which I is the number one uh, place where I get hit upon by spam. Uh, and it's the worst ever place to put your business. Or if you're me, it's better for the corporate person. Well, he was a corporate person. He finds me and he went on and on about how beautiful I was and how he wanted romance and that uh, he liked black tie affairs and a woman in a gown. And I was like, wow, this guy sounds like a fantasy, which he is. And he called himself one name and then a slew of emails later, well, I'm not really encouraging him. I'm sort of like wanting to get 
fodder, F-O-D-D-E-R, material, because I'm not baiting the guy. I was just like, well, you live in California. I live in um, the RTP area. I'm not moving. <laughs> and he's like, I would move the right woman. Long distance romances hide the character of a narcissist or somebody who's shallow and projecting onto you and never gonna be able to be a true partner, which is gonna be a person who lives in your zone, okay? Now that happened to me through an app, not a dating app, most recently. It's a social app I have that's specialized. And I'm not gonna tell you what it is to protect this nut job's integrity. Um, because I think he's so twisted in his brain as a man as to the concept of a woman whom he generalizes as brain dead. Um, let, let me just read you the exchanges we have had over the last couple of years. We've actually known each other only virtually. He has a bit shoot channel, which I tried out for a while, but the people there are nasty. And I went back to YouTube and I stopped talking about things that went against their community guidelines. You know, I'm not going to talk about things that go into your body. Okay. I'm not going to talk about a certain type of people whose religion begins with a J. I'm not going to talk about any of that. I'm not going to talk about controversial subjects. I'm not going to criticize he, she, they pronouns, but I am going to give you information about narcissists, narcissistic abuse, pathological narcissism, and what they look out for. So sit back, get yourself a cup. I'm having water because it's early in the day. And I want you to just hear this exchange and I'm going to do commentary. First, I'm going to read it about, uh, and I, I will say, this is me. And we, uh, I sent this from my phone, which is what I'm recording off of, onto my uh, PC, sorry, my work MacBook, because that's the only way I can do it. Um, so I, I did screenshots of the conversation and I've sent it here. So I don't have a camera separate from my phone. And I said, hey, I like your new profile pic. Uh, and he said something. Um, I was saying how I went back to YouTube and he goes, I've been staying inside and binge watching on BitChute. This is him. I'm going to call him Scrapper. <laughs> um, let's see. There we go. He goes, um, I need these. I really do. He goes, I've been staying. It was, um. I don't know when this was, but we've been talking on and off. He's from Missouri. I'm from the Southeast. So I get more sun earlier in the year. So he's still cold up there. And he goes, I, I take two. I binge watch on bit shoot, but I'm kind of bored with how much mainstream stuff is on there now, but still a great platform for free speech. Bitchute is B I T C H U T E, which I look at as bitch U T. I may make it, he continues, I may make the jump to adding unauthorized. Bitchute has always been tough to upload, and yet yeah, we talked about how I stopped going on there because it took so long for my videos to upload, and therefore I did not want to deal with it anymore. And Scrappy goes on about how um, he thinks Owen Benjamin from Owen Benjamin Comedy is, is the most articulate on the realm earth subject. And then he goes, I never use platforms that censor, so sorry, I will miss your videos on YouTube. Owen shared Thomas Paine's quote, keep this in mind. A person afraid to offend cannot be honest. Happy solstice. So this was back in 2022. That's how long it's been. So that was back in the winter solstice. That was December. So he says, happy new year, pretty lady. Looking forward to seeing that smile some more. And I said to him, good points, scrapper. Also, YouTube has too many commercials and shot. 
That said, there is an audience I have reached there, and so God's work is God's work. Meaning, if I can save one woman from the treacherous manipulations and traps of a predatory creature called the pathological narcissist, I've done my job. And locally, I have. I have saved women. They have thanked me. Thank you for alerting me to their systematic behavioral changes and the cycles and how they put you through the hamster wheel. The cycle goes on and on and on. And if you have a trauma bond in you because you had a pathologically narcissistic parent or you don't understand it or you have a need for love or you have deep insecurities that you don't even know about, a relationship with a pathological narcissist, if it doesn't kill you, will make you stronger. And you will get to see this stuff, which is why I see what I see. And I said to him, um, you're so lucky. Uh, he's, he's going to attend a labor festival. And uh, it's with people that are through the Owen Benjamin comedy team, which I respect. Now, just because I like Owen Benjamin comedy and I like the individual and in his uh, streams does not mean I uh, adhere, and endorse, adhere to and endorse all that he says. Okay? I just find he's a breath of fresh air and I appreciate his talents. So he goes, the drive isn't bad, but I will have to stay over somewhere. And he goes, the smokings are, are a nice place to car camp. So he's still, Missouri's a big state. He still has to drive. He goes, I'm looking forward to the festival. Wow, time is flying fast. How are things with you? And I said, NC, which is North Carolina, is having a revival of local eats, meets, and greets. My neck of the woods is blessed. My dream of having a man in a garden here have been dashed to bits. That said, I know plenty of people, food growers, farmers, oyster growers, et al., etc. in other words, within 10 miles or so, life is good and I am free to be me, you. So that's the whole point of my healing is being free to be me and being able by being single to not have a man in my life that which then disrupts this relationship I'm having with myself, getting to know who I am so I don't get duped again because we are vulnerable after a narcissistically abusive relationship. Uh, he goes, I don't date the brain dead, so I haven't been dating much. And so I'm like, huh, he's calling women brain dead. I'm happiest when I have something to build. It gives me a purpose. And he goes, sorry to hear your dreams are, have been dashed, he continues to bits that about sums up my life i have picked up the pieces so many times well okay he's sharing i got to visit my son and his family for a couple of weeks i haven't seen them in a long time um and he goes he, he got to actually stay overnight with them he he drove to their house i'm like okay um Maybe he's healed enough. Maybe there was something in his fathering that his son never wanted him to be in his life. We don't know. I didn't ask him any of that. But I said, um, this realm has more challenges for some than others. At one time, I thought it was due to karma. Another, I thought individuals choose particularly difficult lives to advance as a soul. Now I think I was duped into a situation impossible to overcome. At 60, there's a snowball's chance in hell, which is what some people's experience on earth is, that I will ever connect to a man on an intimate level. There are too many strikes against us. All of my past relationships were based on trauma bonds that my body responded to positively. The experience of the relationships were all negative. This due to my mother, who's finally diagnosed as pathologically narcissistic, okay? So home, bittersweet home for me, was adrenal spikes and always having to explain yourself and to justify your existence and to not be loved properly, but to be actually ridiculed for having unconditional love for this individual while they could then freely ridicule you. And because I had spent a lifetime being ridiculed and criticized, that became normalized. And, the, and so the trauma bond also is you get rejected by them this is the pathological narcissist person and in my case i would i was addicted to the trauma bond and the addiction makes it so that your body 
is gets used to this roller coaster ride. That's why you don't get off of it. That's why you stay. A healthy person would never tolerate the behaviors and the treatment of a pathological narcissist partner ever. And so um, you also get used to that makeup sex, okay? And that wonderful feeling and them telling you they're sorry or something like it and they'll never do it again. But of course, it's just a cycle that repeats itself. So I said, I'm telling him what's going on with me. We've been speaking since 2020. It's now 2023 that I'm saying this. And I said, my mother was finally diagnosed as pathologically narcissistic. And I said a bunch of other things. And um, I go, you know, it was troublesome get, being raised by somebody who um, criticized you constantly and then getting old enough to get kicked out of the house with no means. In other words, I either had to stay in her house and get criticized constantly, have my privacy barged in upon, have her criticize me relentlessly, or I would um, have to move out. And I chose sanity. I was bulimic when I lived with her just to have control over something. Okay. And I said, such has been my life. At least I have white privilege. <laughs> So I said, and I'm referring to my childhood, I must unlearn everything and then experience life with zero expectations. The men I have met are all damaged in some way. I really cannot take any more of that experience. So unless somebody's self-actualizing, unless somebody's working on themselves, they will project onto you or the female race in general, like him saying, and I, he, I had heard it from him more than once, that women were brain dead. The men I've met are all damaged in some way, I said. I really cannot take much more of that, blah, blah, blah. And I go, and then one male friend that I, I, I know that's decent enough, is just, he's just too old. When you're 60 and he's 65, it's just too much difference. When you're 20 and 25, that's a completely different thing. When you're 60 and 65, it's worlds apart, especially when people tell me I look like I'm in my 50s and I had, have had younger men who have wanted me in their lives, but of course it's for objectification and sexual gratification only. I need a relationship that's deep or none what, I, what so. So I go uh, that thing. I go, you know, my friend also has a tequila habit and sudden bouts of anger. So I just don't trust being with him uh, and being able to relax, especially since my last, I didn't say this, my last partner would just keep drinking and drinking and drinking. And I had a dry drunk as my second husband. And my first husband is a garden variety narcissist. And he is, he drives his current wife crazy, but she's cuckoo too. So that they're both enabling codependent She's got narcissistic tendencies, and so I don't feel sorry for her one iota, but he will never care about her or her needs, ever. She has to practically petition and whine and beg for her needs to be met. So she's become very materialistic and a competitor for my grandchild's attention, my blood grandchild, a family she married into. She's got one little um, a scant of a boy, um, a young 20 something, mid to 20 something year old, um, overconfident um, son who she did her homework for. So, anyway, um, narcissists come in all different shapes and sizes, but everyone is the same. They don't really care about you, they don't really care about what your needs are. In fact, that you even have needs never even crosses their mind. And you're going to see it with this guy. That you have needs and interests outside of the, the way they believe your needs and interests should be are outside of their scope of understanding. That's another huge sign. They don't actually get that you're a human being. They do not actually get that you're a spiritual individual that has a growth and potential and interest in their spiritual development while in physical form. So I said, anyway, um, I'll keep my tequila drinking um, 65 year old as a friend but that's it and i go anyway i have a son daughter-in-law and granddaughter 20 minutes away and they appreciate me and i appreciate them i it's a loving relationship all around i broke the cycle of abuse if that counts for anything and then i said um 
If we all have to come back to this open air prison again and again and again, meaning this earth realm, let's hope it's into a family like Owens, meaning on the farm, raised by two loving parents that love each other, that help develop your talents, and that aren't in competition with you, like my mother, who do not sabotage your own talents because that way you, that you uh, have little chance to outshine them, but outshine them you do anyway. Anyway, I said, um, I'm concerned that Many of the lesser bears disrespect women folk um, because honestly, I have met very few men who deserve to lead their women. Now, on Owen Benjamin comedy, he has a bitch shoot station and he, he encourages men to lead women and he encourages them to, to take the lead. And oftentimes he'll make jokes about women like women drivers and things like that. And he makes vast generalizations, which he does to be funny, but the lesser bear, that the less actualized and the younger, more in, easily influenced individual, and they could, we call ourselves bears, yes, infantile, juvenile, whatever, but I have a bear name. None of your business what it is, but I'm involved with this. It, it's a great group for my own purposes. And again, I don't endorse everything, but I, I'm just say, sharing with Scrappy here that um, women are not to be disrespected. Honestly, I have met very few men, I continue, who deserve to lead their women. There's that too. As for brain dead women, and here I am being funny, I imagine it's from the overuse of commercial beauty products, synthetic clothing, tight yoga pants, and pointy shoes. Oh, and let's not forget Botox injections. And then I continue, good for you that you visited your son and his family. Hopefully they will have a successful marriage and not fuck up their kids. And I said, well, it's time for me to have a cup of coffee and count my blessings. Life may not have turned out the way I wanted it to. Terrible mistakes were made, but no one can say I didn't try. My love has always been given more freely than I have received from a testosterone dominant human. And so it's time to love myself unconditionally for once. Be well and have fun. I'm doing what I can to maintain sanity in this insane world. Now you notice how I did not make a blanket statement about the male race or, uh, you know, the male. I just said that I have been giving them more love than I have received. Now, again, that was from my messed up childhood and now I've healed from that. And now I'm, I'm rather asexual when it comes to men. I look at them and I consider them as very difficult um, to love physically because you have to develop a relationship that's emotional because older men aren't as attractive as younger men, okay? And also that last relationship I had was very demanding sexually. And my second husband, which was the second narcissist, he was the dry drunk. Um, and that's why the third one, I, I was so easily fooled because he was partying, but he over partied. He never knew when to stop drinking. Um, but they all, it's like, love me, love my penis. And I just got tired of having to crank that machine. You know what I mean? So um, I said, yeah, I ended it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what I can to stay sane in an insane world. And didn't make a blanket statement about men. But he goes, okay, pointy shoes just four times a year at my discretion, he says, as long as you wear pretty dresses or I will end up wearing the dresses and that won't be pretty. Ha ha, he says. I'm like, okay. So four times a year at my discretion, is he being funny or is he serious? And I said, ha ha, pointy shoes are one thing and one thing only, a tool for the conditioned sexual response from men. I wear pretty dresses with open toe sandals or barefoot. So there, and I did a face like this, an <sighs> emoji. He goes, as long as you work the garden, now this is more of like, huh, here's this guy dictating to me. As long as you work the garden in microgreens, and he gets specific, 20 hours a week, clean the kitchen three to four hours a week, we might be able to make it work. I'll do the rest. Oh, and you should laugh at my jokes. Always tell me how wonderful I am. What about me? That was the number one thing. None of my narc abusers ever appreciated me. 
my children's father, I got criticized for not having a clean house. He wouldn't let me go anywhere without his approval. My son and his uh, wife, they take turns. They understand the need to have a well-rounded life. Okay. And then he goes on discrediting me in, in, in my feeling. But let's see what you think. Most all of us have had at least one messed up parent or parent that messed us up. It's okay. We're all crazy here and we are all on our own. I drank the booze a few years when the crash of 2010 happened and I could no longer support myself building houses out in Colorado. The handlers know how to keep us desperate. I sunk into, pre into depression and started drinking. And um, he goes, I quit in 2012. So that means he had a two year drink, drink, drinking session when I didn't want to be drunk in front of my grandson who moved to Maryland, by the way, with his father. It's like pouring demons in you. I've given up the television a year earlier, figuring out two planes can't crash and bring down three buildings. It's all lies and destruction. Maybe a little late, but I'm still figuring things out. This is him. I just decided I would clean up my diet and live longer and healthier. Now I would like to focus on growing things that can heal people. I still throw a picture up on the singles page once in a, once in a while, but mostly have given up trying to find someone pure blood and compatible meaning pure blood without this in their blood. I'm afraid I might end up like Omega Man, all alone in a world that used to be. Yeah, I can relate. I go, it's nice you can be honest. This is me. It's nice you can be honest and share some of your story. And yeah, sure, most of us had messed up parents. Pathological narcissism is a completely different animal. And you can consider yourself lucky you did not have that affect your entire mindset and conditioning. I'm what is considered a woman with superpowers by therapists who know what I've had to deal with my entire life. Your lack of empathy and brushing it off as typical is forgiven. My best friend killed herself, that was in 2020, from her continued narcissistic abuse. Her mother started it and every partner after that modeled that abuse. That's how much damage is done to a person's internal wiring from such an experience. As an elder female, I have counseled younger women who are caught up in the trap a pathological narcissist is able to construct. So, unless you yourself are a pathological narcissist, at least consider your words as ignorant and as uninformed as I know they are. Good for you for getting sober. The youngsters need us around. As for your joke about my role in the kitchen and with microgreens being outside, and, and, and microgreens, in other words, he delegated me to 20 hours of work and two to four in the kitchen daily cleaning it. I go being outside barefoot and using a pitchfork to turn the soil as a permaculture is my thing. I want to, I want to grow food. Men are not the rulers of women in an egalitarian setting. Owen's not evite, this is Owen Benjamin, in suggesting that men lead and women follow is not what he actually does with his wife, Amy. All those impressionable young men are going to become tyrannical husbands, especially the Christian ones who adhere to the incorrectly interpreted Bible. So you can, so I was mad and I was, it was this morning and I was, I am been nurturing myself and I have been allowing my inner male to come up and take the lead because I don't have a strong male and I didn't have a father in my life because he was pussy whipped. So you can take your joke about the kitchen duties in the high heels and stuff them where the sun don't shine. Well, I feel better. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I had to I had to land it with a, a slam dunk. However, you decide whether or not I came off heavy. If you were a man who had any emotional stability at all, he would have been able to handle it. Women test men, and he failed the tests. And this is how. So sad you're so damaged, he says. Every woman is a narcissist. Your experience with your mother is just a glimpse of what, of what your father dealt with, I'm sure. So he's telling me I'm so damaged and he's so sad about it. And it's sad that I'm damaged. Then he says every woman is a narcissist. And then he suggests that my experience with my mother is just a glimpse of what my father dealt with 
Oh, no, no, no. I did not tell him this, but my father is dealing with it now. Karma's a bitch. He never, ever defended us kids. In fact, he blamed us for everything, too. We were scapegoats for their ales. We were constantly told how expensive we were and how we were wrecking things. Why, should you have, why would you have kids then? Narcissists have kids so that you are guaranteed to think they're wonderful and be dependent on them and help them with their small, fragile ego, egos feel better about themselves. That's why narcissists have kids. He goes, uh, it seems every time I entertain the thought of a relationship with a woman, I'm reminded of the drama. It wasn't a joke. He's referring to me telling him, oh, thanks for the joke about me in the heels and the dresses and the kitchen and the microgreens. It wasn't a joke. I think it is a great offer for the right woman if I could find her. It's an offer for him at his discretion to tell you when you can wear pointy heels four times a year for his jack-off experience and for you to work in the kitchen two to four hours while he does everything else and that you are to spend 20 plus hours doing your woman's work. Then he says, good luck. I hope you find healing. Owen and Amy are awesome. Yeah, of course they are. Yeah, the thought of a relationship. I'm reminded of the drama. He has been asking me and inviting me out there since 2020. And I keep saying, no, you're too far away, dude. I've already done the long distance relationship. It doesn't work. I'm not leaving my family. And I answered thus. No, you have it incorrect, sir. Damages are repairable. I am repairing and healing myself by nurturing myself for once and speaking my truth for once. An individual's perception is only as accurate as their life experiences. That's my, my, my nice way of saying you, you don't see me at all. Of course he doesn't. All women are brain dead. I bring on drama. And why, I, I continue, and why would a healthy woman leave her own family to work 20 hours in the kitchen of a man who misperceives her? You may have good intentions, but your interpretation of me is incorrect. And then I said more. You were also wrong about my experience being but a glimpse of what my dad experienced. So, so wrong. You know nothing and appear to have insight. It's laughable. All women are narcissists, I ask him. Blanket statement much? Maybe you don't know what a woman actually is. Maybe your fucked up childhood fucked up your ability to accept her nurturance, her nurturing abilities, in other words, and made you a boss man instead. You're the one who needs the luck, my friend. <laughs> and I've listened to his... Uh, bit shoot channel and it's nothing to write home about so anyway friends what did you think about that huh <laughs> i'll catch up later um this has been a nice long one i feel better about myself and i let a good amount of time go by before i responded to him and I waited until i had actually recognized that asserting myself is not defending myself and that being, being being put on the meaning, it, it's not bad to defend yourself. Every narcissistic partner I've ever had says, why are you being so defensive? It's because they put you on the defensive. And so I got to be able to say my mind without fear of being a um, disliked. And I remind you all what it is that he himself said when he goes, controversial subjects make the best discussions. In other words, narcissism, pathological narcissism, the male versus the female, a man being a boss man and thinking that he's gonna lead this woman and have her do what his beck and call, thinking she's brain dead, wanting her to still wear pointy shoes for his sexual fantasy and not understanding her needs. Owen shared Thomas Paine's quote, a person afraid to offend cannot be honest. Ha!